Some nuclei are stable while some are unstable. Those nuclei that are unstable, they decay by emitting alpha particles, beta particles or electromagnetic radiation like gamma radiation and they become stable in the process. We can call such unstable nuclei as radioactive in nature. But how do we know when each type of decay occurs? How do we know if an unstable nucleus will undergo either alpha decay or beta plus or beta minus decay? That is what we will explore in this video. We know that for lighter nuclei, for nuclei with atomic number less than 20, the ratio of neutrons to protons, the ratio of n by z, this is equal to 1. This means that for atoms with atomic number less than 20, the nucleus contains equal number of neutrons and protons. The strong nuclear force which acts between all the nucleons, that is between neutron, 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 proton and also proton and proton, that strong nuclear force is more is more than the electrostatic force. That strong nuclear force is more than the electrostatic force, the Coulombic force of repulsion between the protons. But this strong nuclear force acts only over a short range. So if we talk about heavier nuclei, nuclei with a very high atomic number, it turns out that the ratio does not remain as one, the ratio changes. For heavier nuclei, these are the ones with a very high atomic number, for them the ratio turns out to be equal to 1.5. This means that there are more neutrons than protons in the nucleus of such atoms. Let's quickly see why. So if you, if you draw a nucleus, just a random nucleus like this, and if you have protons, they will undergo Coulombic repulsion because both of them have positive electrical charge. So they will tend to break the nucleus apart. But because these two protons are so close to each other, the strong nuclear force overcomes the electrostatic repulsion force and the nucleus can remain happy, it can remain stable. But for a larger nucleus, you can have protons, you can have one proton over here and one proton over here. Now these two protons are quite far apart, so they are still undergoing Coulombic repulsion. But now the strong nuclear force will not act between them because the strong nuclear force acts only over very short distances. So the Coulombic repulsion, the electrostatic repulsion will tend to tear the nucleus apart. And what you need are more neutrons. You need more neutrons so that you can insulate the protons from the effects of each other. Now if you have a neutron next to these protons, there will be a strong nuclear force between them and that will tend to keep the nucleus stable. But if you keep on increasing the protons, if you keep on increasing the protons, there is a, there is a limit beyond 83 adding more neutrons, they do not overcome the Coulombic repulsion force because now there are so many protons that the electrostatic force of repulsion sort of wins and just adding more neutrons, they do not overcome, they do not, they do not insulate the protons from the effects of each other and the nucleus is very unstable. So all the, all the atoms with atomic number more than 83, their nuclei are unstable, they are radioactive in nature. So this ratio goes from 1, it does not directly jump to 1.5, it goes from 1 to 1.2, 1.3, then it goes to 1.5. Now we can plot this ratio n by z. So let's try and plot this. First, let's make some space. Alright, so if we have number of neutrons on the y-axis and number of protons on the x-axis, then this line, the straight line, this will represent n by z equal to 1. You have n equal to z and a line making an angle of 45 from both the axes that represents n by z equal to 1. So let's let's write that. This is n by z equal to 1. But if we try and plot all the atoms with whatever ratio they have, they will not all lie on this line. That will only happen up till z, the atomic number z equal to 20. And after that, the ratio increases. So as a result of which the line, the line kind of looks like this. All the atoms, all the stable atoms with stable nuclei, they lie on this, on this blue line. Up till, up till z equal to 20, we do have a straight line, but then the ratio increases. It increases from 1 to 1.2, 1.3, up till 1.5. This blue line right here, this line is called line of stability. Let's, let's write that. This is called, this is called line of stability. So all the stable nuclei, they will lie on this line and all the unstable nuclei, they won't lie on this line. Some might lie above on the left hand side over here, some might, some might lie over here to the right hand side. Some might lie on the top 
if a nucleus lies in this shaded region in the blue light blue shaded region what can we say about the ratio well up till even up till z equal to 20 if it lies in this shaded region the ratio is still not 1 and beyond that beyond that as well the ratio is still not equal to 1.5 there are too many neutrons relative to the number of protons the ratio over here is not 1 it might be i don't know 1.3 1.4 the ratio over here is again not 1.5 might be 1.6 or 7 and that is because it has more neutrons more the required number of neutrons than the number of protons so it needs to get rid of some neutrons the nucleus will be stable if the ratio of n by z is pushed in this direction and how will that happen so for this to happen there needs to be a decrease in the number of neutrons we can see there has to be some decrease in the number of neutrons and there has to be some increase in the number of protons so a neutron needs to be changed to a proton only then the unstable nuclei which lie in this shaded region will become stable by being pushed towards a line of stability so a neutron needs to be changed to a proton in this for for the nuclei which are which are lying in this shaded region and this is beta minus dk whenever a neutron changes to a proton an electron is also emitted and this is a beta beta minus dk so all the unstable nuclei which lie in this shaded region they are called beta minus emitters a neutron is being changed to a proton so let's see what that does to the ratio one neutron decreases and one proton increases the ratio the ratio of n by z decreases and that is good because the ratio was higher than required it was above the blue line the ratio was more the number of neutrons were more than required so let's take an example if we have carbon 14 let's take an example of carbon 14 this undergoes beta minus dk and carbon 14 after undergoing the beta minus dk forms forms nitrogen and one electron is released if we calculate the ratio n by z for carbon 14 we have 14 minus 6 8 neutrons 8 neutrons divided by 6 8 divided by 6 that is the n by z ratio so that is 1.3 and for nitrogen 14 minus 7 is 7 so 7 neutrons divided by 7 protons so that is 1 so that's good maybe this carbon 14 was lying maybe somewhere over here now it is pushed towards the line of stability by a beta minus dk what about the unstable nuclei which lie in this pink shaded region now here the number of protons are more than the required value the nuclei has too many protons relative to the number of neutrons the ratio n by z over here would be less than one because now you have more z than n so it will be it needs to be pushed towards the line of stability over here maybe it is less than 1.5 the ratio it needs to be pushed towards the line of stability and how can that be done you need to you need to get rid of some protons you need to go back you need to get rid of some protons and increase some neutrons so that the ratio of n by z is again appropriate and the nucleus after undergoing the decay is pushed towards the line of stability these these are called beta plus emitters where a proton changes to a neutron and a positron is emitted in the process here the ratio the ratio of n by z is increasing because the number of neutrons are increasing it's increasing by one and the number of protons are decreasing by one let's take an example of copper so you have this copper which after undergoing beta plus dk it forms it forms nickel and a positron is emitted we can look at the ratio n by z so initially 64 29 if we calculate the ratio of n by z number of neutrons would be 64 minus 29 that is 35 35 divided by 29 that would be 1.2 and in this case the ratio becomes 1.28 so the ratio increases it increases slightly and the nucleus of nickel would be more stable than the nucleus of this isotope of copper so the ratio is slightly increased the unstable nucleus undergoes decay and the product the product that is formed is slightly pushed towards a line of stability now for atoms with atomic number more than 83 this is this is the last stable nucleus for all the atoms beyond this they are too large they are just too large they want to get rid of some protons very quick very soon so what they what happens over there is alpha decay alpha decay is the process which emits an alpha particle a helium nucleus with with two protons and two neutrons 
because these atoms are so large they get rid of some protons and also some neutrons two protons and two neutrons right away so the ratio becomes n minus 2 divided by z minus 2 two neutrons and two protons are emitted right away and as a result of this emission this these unstable nuclei they are pushed in this direction let's see how the ratio really changes let's see if the ratio increases or decreases let's take an example for that first to make some space okay let's let's take an example of uranium so you have uranium undergoing alpha decay to make thorium 23490 and an alpha particle is emitted so if we calculate the n by z ratio here it is 238 minus 92 divided by 92 and here it is 234 minus 90 divided by 90 so the ratio over here this is 1.58 and the ratio here is 1.6 now the ratio slightly increases that's what happens in alpha decay the ratio slightly increases the ratio of n by z increases only slightly but you might be wondering why is that happening we want to keep the ratio closer to 1.5 1.56 one that's it's closer to 1.58 why are we increasing the ratio the only reason for that is because the nucleus is so large it immediately needs to get rid of some protons that's the quickest way for it to become slightly stable that's the quickest way for it to become for it to move towards stability but this decay does not end here it's highly possible that then this thorium this thorium nucleus undergoes a beta minus decay to form 234 protactinium and now if you check the ratio now the ratio goes from 1.6 if you figure out the ratio for this 234 minus 91 divided by 91 this is 1.58 the ratio is such that the atom would lie on this line of stability so many atoms that undergo alpha decay do not just stop there at alpha decay they do undergo some other forms of decay so that the ratio so the ratio is such that the atom that the final that the final product lies on the line of stability but for very large nuclei with atomic number more than 83 they get rid of some extra protons by just undergoing alpha decay first.